This is a Louis T. Network exclusive. Who else could it be? But me, your man. Louis T, welcome. You are in the lab room, of course. I'm your host, Luke. Thank you for joining me. On the 2016 NFL Draft Prospects 101 Series, your guide to some of the biggest and hottest names in the 2016 NFL Draft. We're talking running backs, and that float starting to clear up a little bit, feeling a little bit better, man, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to power through it either way. Sore throw, no sore throw, you're still getting the energy that you came here for. Now we're talking running backs. And these, this next back, the more tape I put on of this guy, the more and more I started to say, man, I really like this guy. I'm talking about Latex Kenneth Dixon. Here's a guy at 5'10", 215 pounds. One of the knocks on guys that are sub 220 or so is they're not big enough. I don't buy any of that. I don't subscribe to the he's not big enough to carry the load in the NFL. When's the last time a guy's really carried the load in the NFL anymore? I mean, guys don't do that for the most part. You gotta be an exceptional top 10 back to be the guy and getting the, the lion's share of the carries with your football team. Normally, around you look around the league and it's two-headed monsters just about everywhere. Nobody's toting the rock. Even guys that are toting the rock for their teams, not getting the football 30 plus times. Nobody's doing it. It's not the 80s anymore. It's not the 90s anymore. Dudes don't get 25 carries. If a guy gets 25 carries, that's putting in work these days, okay? You look up and a guy's got 21 carries. He's got 19 carries. These guys can carry the football 19 times, 20 times a game. You know, and, and you're not going to get it that many times in every single game. Game plans change depending on who you're playing. And look, at the end of the day, he's 5'10", 215. I don't have a problem with it. I said all of that to say this. I don't have a problem with this size, so I put it down as a pro. Tremendous box, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the, the trinity together right now for you. Tremendous balance, outstanding feet, and remarkable vision. You, you wanna be able to be a dynamic back. You gotta have those three things, and you have to have them in conjunction with one another, or else it doesn't work, okay? Vision without feet doesn't work. Vision without balance doesn't work. Vision and balance without feet doesn't work. You get where I'm going with this. You get the premise. He's got all three. His ability to change direction. And let's go to his next pro. Good quickness. It's, <laughs> this guy, to me, is just one of those dudes that you think you got him bottled up. He sticks his foot in the ground and he breaks you off. And next thing you know, he's got to pass that first defender. Here comes another guy flying, and he just jumps back. And next thing you know, he's sliding by, and he's up the field again. And you're just like, wow, he just made two guys miss in a span of three yards. And he took a play that should have got two yards and turned it into a 12-yard game. And, and like I said, the more tape I watched of Kenneth Dixon, I said, man, I really like this guy, man. This is, this is a really viable back at the next level. I really like what he brings to the table. Sudden run is the next pro, man, and he, there's a suddenness. There, there's some sub subtleties with his game where you're just like, you, the more you watch, and again, he's like a fine wine. The more tape you put on, the more your palate begins to get used to watching Kenneth, Kenneth Dixon run the football, and the more you appreciate what he brings to the table. Because the first couple of games, I'm like, uh, it's okay, it's not all that great. And as I watch more tape, I'm like, that was nice. That was nice. I like that. I like that as well. So there's a subtle subtlety about his game. There's some subtleness with his style of running and the, the little subtle cuts that he makes. He's a sudden runner. He's a quick little cut. It's, it's not something that's eye-popping or draw job dropping, but it's a, it's a little cut here and a little change of direction there that gets him some extra yards. It's a little stiff arm at the end of the run that pops it and allows him to get into the end zone and separate from a defender. It's just the little things with his game that Kenneth Dixon does that allows him to find the end zone. He's a make you miss back. That's the next pro. He makes guys miss. And when you can make guys miss 
and he did well at college. If he can do that at the next level, he's going to be around for a while. The guys that can make defenders miss hang around for some for some time because the name of the game is getting positive yardage. And at the NFL level, you're going to encounter guys soon as you get the football, immediate penetration. Guard center get beat, split by defensive tackle. You gotta make him miss. You get to the second level, the guys that separate themselves from the average backs in the league, the ones that can make guys miss at the second level. Okay, look, if the play's blocked for seven yards and you get to the second level, okay, line's done their job, fullback may be on the field, it may be a single back set, whatever the case may be. The guys up front have done their job, okay? They've won, they've given you an opportunity to take this seven yard run and turn it into a 37 yard run. The only thing stopping you from turning this seven yard run into a 37 yard run is you beating the safety. Can you make that guy miss out of space? And Mr. Dixon can do exactly that. He's got that make you miss ability. He uses a beautiful stiff arm as well as a complimentary tool to get him past defenders as well. There's a lot of things, again, that suddenness that I talked about, the subtleties of his game. Again, as you watch, you begin to grow fond of what Kenneth Dixon brings to the table as a running back. Good burst. Not the fastest guy in the world, but let me talk about this next pro as well. Good burst, nose for the end zone, okay? And when normally when you hear nose for the end zone, you're talking about one, two yard touchdowns. You're talking about the, the Marcus Allen type guys that when they get to the one yard line, they're gonna find a way in. The, the Emmett Smiths of the world, they're gonna find a way in the end zone when they get to the one yard line, when they get to the two yard line. This is a little bit different. This guy's scoring from 50 yards out. This guy's scoring from 30 yards out. And without top end speed, he's doing this. And the reason he's able to do it, he's got a really good burst. There's another gear there. Now it's not elite. It's not him going to fifth gear. He doesn't have a fifth gear. But he's got a fourth gear though, where he, he shifted, he shifted a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay. And then even when a guy catches up to him, because again, he doesn't have breakaway speed. He doesn't pull away from guys and create distance. So when that guy catches up and approaches him, he's like, hey man, get off me. <laughs> I'm going to the end zone. And you trying to stop me from going where I'm trying to get. So you gotta get off me, take this stuff off, back off me. So even when you do catch up with him, he's got a little bit of extra to get him in the end zone. He's got a really good burst that allows him to accelerate from defenders initially. Now again, he's gonna get caught at some point, but then when you catch up to him, you might catch a stiff arm for your troubles, man. So really like what Ken Dixon does down the field. That's why he has a nose for the end zone because he just has a way of finding the end zone. He has a way of finding pay dirt. And again, when you can find the end zone, you're gonna be around for a while. Go ahead and grab a Snickers. Tough as nails. He just plays the game aggressively. I love it. I love it, want more of it. Uh, another knock on him is how long is he gonna be able to keep up the running style that he has because he just plays the game with a reckless abandon that I just, frankly, I love. And again, as a running back, that kind of punishment wears on you and it takes a toll on your body over time. And we'll see guys, especially the running back position, more so than any other position in, in all of football, running backs fall off of a damn cliff. I mean, you can see a running back and you're like, man, this guy is good. He's good, he's good, he's good. And then next thing you know, they hit year seven and he got 1,088 yards. And in year eight, he looks like he is done. I'm talking about 541 yards. He didn't have any burst, no acceleration, and his body just said, I'm done, man, I'm done. And so, more so than any other position, in the running back position is one where that damage, it takes a toll, and it adds up. And there's no finite number, but there's a number definitely in there, somewhere where your body says, all right, I reached my threshold, I'm done. And it shuts down, and you're no longer the player that you used to be. And so uh, a lot of people worry about that with him because he's a tough running back, he's aggressive. Again, I don't care, man. Do it up as big as you can for as long as you can. And when that time comes and Father Time taps you on the shoulder and says, hey man, it's time to go. Then you can be able to say, I left it all out on the field. And, and that's the kind of player Ken Dixon is. Reliable receiver. He's a guy that catches the football out of the backfield. I love the fact that he's not a one-trick pony. He's not a guy that just catches screens. He's not a guy that just catches swing routes out of the backfield. I love him running a wheel route up the sideline. I think that's one of his best routes. 
He'll fake the out route. Next thing you know, he's up the sideline. If you lay it out there, he'll catch it. Run away from a defender, get in the end zone. Saw a couple of touchdowns like that from him. And a couple more that could have been had had the quarterback been able to get him the football out in front. So he's a dynamic receiver to me in, in certain instances. And I think he's more of a reliable receiver, a guy that will catch it 30, two seasons of over 30 catches for Kenneth Dixon. So he's a guy that you can throw the football to and, and expect him to catch it. Willing blocker in pass pro. Is he the greatest blocker? Nope. But he will stick his nose in there. He'll be physical. He'll give you what he's got. And I don't have a problem with that. Sign me up for the guy that is willing to put his body on the line. May not be the best at it, but he's willing to do it. And if you can show me a guy who's willing, I'll show you a guy who's able. So give me the guy that's willing to do it. And Kenneth Dixon is willing to do that. His cons. Quicker than fast. You know what that means. I hate saying that because you know what that means. You know what it means. He's slow, man. He's slow. Four, five, eight, four. I'm gonna tell you this much. He might be one of the fastest four, five, eights I've ever seen. Okay. And what does that really mean? I, don't ask me. I don't know. Okay. Stop asking. I don't know what that really means. But four, five, eight. His four, five, eight looks a lot faster than some guys that run four, five, four, four, five, two. His four, five, eight looks a lot faster than that. Now, that being said, you can tell he's not running really, really fast. So. At the next level, those little tricks that I talked about, the little subtleties in his game, the suddenness, the stiff arm, all of those things, he's going to have to bring that with him. And he's going to have to use that effectively at the next level if he's going to continue to find the end zone. The guy at one point set the NCAA record for most touchdowns scored in a career. At 87, now, of course, we know Keenan Robinson, um, Keenan Reynolds, excuse me, the Navy quarterback, ultimately broke that a couple weeks later or, or one week later and, and set that record. But... I mean, that just shows you his productivity that he had when he was at La Tech and his ability to get to the end zone. So he's quicker than fast. He finds a way to get it done, but he's not a guy with explosive game changing speed. And so that's one of the things that's a drawback for Kenneth Dixon. Wear and tear. This is something I worry about with him. Remember, I told you he's tough as nails, plays the game with reckless abandon. I love it. But with that comes a price. There's a cost to playing a game like it's your last snap. Okay? 889 touches over his four-year collegiate career. Now, that's a lot of touches, okay? I heard a lot of people talking about Derrick Henry and his workload last year. Well, Derrick Henry didn't touch the football 900 times in a four-year span, okay? But Kenneth Dixon did, basically. 222 carries over his collegiate career on average for those four years. That's a lot of touches for a guy that hasn't hit the league yet. And in 13, he had a knee because of it. In 15, he had an ankle that he was dealing with. So he's a guy that will get banged up because he plays this game so hard. So I worry about him and the amount of wear and tear. There's some trade off of those tires already before he gets to the league. Again, if he's sharing a load with somebody, that should extend his life in terms of his NFL shelf life. But we'll see what happens with him at the next level. Fumbles. To me, that supersedes everything else because forget about wear and tear, forget about lack of uh, long distance speed. If you're not holding on to the ball, you can't get on the field, okay? Some coaches put you in the doghouse and bury you underneath the doghouse when you fumble the football. 13 fumbles in his last three seasons at La Tech. That's inexcusable. And whether you get them back or not, I don't like to see the church's money on the floor, okay? Wise man once told me, don't put the church's money on the floor, okay? Do not fumble the football. Don't lay it on the carpet. Whether we get it back or not, you just scared me. My heart just skipped the beat, man. Keep the football in your hands. So if you can't corral the football and keep it locked and stop and tight, put that key in, lock it up, throw the key away, he's going to find himself sitting on the pine at the next level. Fumbling is not tolerated at the next level. In the next football. Lee. But that's Kenneth Dixon, Lob Tech running back, and his draft prospects 101 breakdown that happens in the National Football League. Whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab. We'll come back and join me as I continue to break down anything. And that free thing, National Football League. I got another running back in my pocket. I'm going to pull it out next time on the program. See you then. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter.
Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.